the Senior Lead Scientist for Application Science at Enscopics. Our Journal Club series is a fairly recent effort to keep the scientific community connected during these difficult times. We'll be periodically discussing publications of importance to the field of circuit neuroscience, often featuring Enscopics and Vista or Invoke technology. And we're excited to have you today joining the discussion from your virtual offices at home. You can send us questions via the chat window throughout the presentation and for up to five minutes after the presentation is over. We'll do our best to try to get to as many questions as possible with a hard stop at 12 o'clock Pacific time. Today, our field scientific consultant, Ching Lu, will be presenting a nature neuroscience publication from Francesco Papaleo's lab at the Italian Institute of Technology. Ching received his PhD from Rutgers University and worked as a postdoc at NIMH before joining in Scopics in the fall of 2019. His research focused on the role of psychiatric risk factors such as ARC and MECP2 and neuronal and astrocyte dysfunction and psychiatric disorders. Being an expert himself in the application of calcium, calcium imaging to neuropsychiatric disease work, it's appropriate that he will be reviewing this paper today. And with that, I will hand it over to Ching. All right. Let me share my screen. Hello, everyone. Glad to present this paper and hope you enjoy your, uh, the, your day and welcome to this journal club. So today I'm going to talk about uh, some statin fun interneuron function in the prefrontal cortex of how they discriminate uh, different affective states in mice. So just a little bit background about the uh, different types of interneurons in, in, the, in the cortex. They generally can be classif classified into three groups based on the neurochemical, uh, neurochemical expression patterns. So including parabumin and some statin and also the 5-HT serotonin uh, 3A receptor expressing neurons and VIP uh, is one of these subtypes of the 5-HT. Uh, and in the some sensory, uh, some statin group, they can be further divided into uh, Martinotti subtype and also non-Martinotti subtype. In this paper, they are not really uh, further distinguish their subtype function. So they are just focusing using uh, some statin cream line to generally investigate the some statin uh, interneural function. So the postsynaptic uh, innovation pattern is different. This is a simplified uh, paradigm showing the difference between the somostatin interneurons and these uh, PV neurons. This is, this is uh, the focus of this paper. The PV neurons are mostly inhibiting the uh, proxim prox proximal uh, somar region, while the somosensory uh, the somostatin neurons inhibit the distal part of the dendrite from the uh, excitatory pyramid neurons. Also, the somostatin neur interneurons can also uh, in inhibiting the PV neurons. So they, they, their uh, natural effect could be complicated depending on the, uh, which one is dominating, inhibiting the pyramid neurons or inhibiting the PV neurons. Uh, and also the the Difference in, in addition to this synaptic innovation dif uh, pattern difference, their electrophysiological properties are different as well. So this is a example a diagram from in vivo um, loose patch recording. So this is showing uh, one of these uh, spike. So you can notice the uh, in addition to the spike rate difference and within the single spike neurons, their waveform can also be different. So the P1 to P2 interval can generally matter how wide this waveform is. So you can see normally these fast spike in your interneurons can have very high firing rate, also very short interval. Well, there is a large range of the interval uh, from uh, both some statin interneurons and also the uh, excited neurons. So they are not really easily distinguishable for just by looking at their waveforms. So this graph will be useful for later electrophysiology categorization when they look at their uh, 
uh, physiology recording uh, during the in vivo uh, behavior task, they can generally tell uh, which uh, separate them into two jet groups, but uh, if, if it is, we have a difficulty to separate so, some of the statin from the excitatory neurons. So just the spend the time in, in with the uh, per experiment design from this group, you will see this graph uh, in multiple times in the following figures. So this is a general uh, paradigm uh, of pro to approximate human emotion detection. So in, in this left panel, it's a uh, 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 detection discriminating the positive affective state. So they are having two mice divide in, in each being put in uh, inverted wire cup and they're separated by a black wall. And the first mice uh, be the, the gray one will be neutral, meaning they have free access to water all the time. Uh, the last one will be a relief mice, which has been uh, water put in a uh, water restriction for 23 hours and just have water access for one hour before the uh, at, at the ABT test, which is the affective state discrimination task. So by looking at this uh, behavior pattern, you will see this is a heat map showing the place preference. You will see uh, this observer mice, we have a preference to approach this relief mice compared to this neutral mice. So similarly, when the, you put two mice uh, in, instead of putting the relief mice, you can put a, also put a, a negative affective state mice. In this case, it's a stress mice. You can restrain the mice uh, for 15 minutes and then put it in the cup. The observer, once again, we have a place preference preferred to approach this uh, negative affective state uh, the uh, mice. So this is their behavior paradigm design. So as maybe you can start to see, the, the place preference uh, can be generally used as a uh, kind of output as uh, how this animal observer can discriminate between different affective states. So the other parameters you can see is uh, in addition to the time in the zone, like the heat map is showing, uh, during the first two minutes of exploration, there. Uh, much more spend more time in to approach the affective state, uh, positive state mice, and also they spend more time in sniff, uh, sniffing this uh, this um, this animal compared to the neutral mice. Uh, their latency to start approaching is also greater sh shorten compared to the neutral animal. Uh, this is generally paralleled by this uh, negative F affective state, so the animal show. Uh, spend more time is in the zone and also actively approaching the animal. And also they spend a uh, very short latency to approach this effect, negative effect state of mice compared to the neutral one. So this next graph is just showing how robust this uh, behavior paradigm is. So they have many uh, parallel studies, collect all the animals you can see most of the animals, 86 out of 96, show some sort of uh, discrimination compared to the, uh, the chance level, like 50%. And they are not sex dependent. So if you separate them into male uh, by fe or female, those all are male group, meaning the observer and the, the demonstrator are all male and female are meaning they are same sex uh, female group. So they're not sex dependent. Uh, so these trends are similar between the positive and also the negative affective states. And this is next graph, just see this is a very unique trait. It's distinguished, distinct, distinctive from the sociability. So the, the way they measure the sociability is by uh, 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 modify this paradigm instead of presenting the two mice in pairs, they can present one mice to have a one-on-one -on -one social interaction. So in this three one-on-one -on -one interaction, they spend pretty uh, similar time with each other. That means their general sociability is not effective by their affective state. 
So the uh, time span with each other is high in the beginning and then over time it decreased. So, but their trend is pretty consistent no matter which affective state they are in. So to couple with the behavior task, uh, very robust behavior, they coupled with the in vivo uh, EPIS recording, which is a multi unit recording implanted in the prefrontal cortex, the region of interest they are starting. And then they can quantify how this neural activity will be modulated by this social interaction. So this uh, green line meaning the onset of the social interaction and this red line meaning the offset of the social interaction. So what you can see from this uh, first two minutes and these are the second two minutes and the third two minutes. What you've been noticed is the neural activity is generally activated across this uh, uh, this window. I think in, yeah, it's, it's obvious even from the third second and the third two minute window, even though the behavior pattern is most uh, sensitive detected in the first two minutes, but the neural activity can be seen uh, all across the 60 minute window. Similar pattern can also be seen in the negative effect state. So neural activity will be uh, upregulated and then staying all the way until the interaction is uh, off. So next is uh, they can divide this uh, electric physiology based on the waveform. I mentioned a little bit early, so you can distinguish uh, the near uh, the high spiking narrow neurons away from this uh, uh, broad spiking neurons. So you can also you can be seen from their recording as well. Generally, they are, uh, you can distinguish two groups based on the frequency of firing, also based on the uh, depolarization duration, high polarizing duration. It's pretty similar to this. Uh, in the spike interval. So you can generally separate them into two groups. So in the first group, which is a fast spiking, narrow waveform neurons, you can see the tuning modulation from the behavior. So the, compared to the habituation, you will see when the animals start to approach each other, neural activity getting modulated, up regulated, and then it's sustained towards the end of the behavior exploration and then return back to baseline after the, at the end of the exploration. So this is also very true for this uh, negative state discrimination task. So narrow spiking neurons, we have low baseline and then can increase the firing from these neurons, uh, I mean, sustained towards the end. So the bottom graph showing a group summary, uh, very similar to what you see before and consistent with this trend. So this is from the narrow spiking neurons. So if you look at the wide spiking neurons, it's a uh, there's general baseline shift compared to the habituation. So which is uh, is below zero compared to the uh, Z score normalized uh, uh, Z score, but the overall trend is pretty consistent with the narrow spiking neurons. You, you will see uh, up regulation once it's getting uh, more active exploring and maintained towards the end, and then it's returning the baseline. So there's just, as I said, since the waveform itself cannot be used as a uh, feature to separate the somastatin or excitatory pyramidal neurons. So there's no way for, for, the, for us to know whether this upregulation is contributed by the excited neurons or the somastatin neurons. So later on, we use some imaging assay to confirm which neurons are really upregulated and which ones are inhibited. So since we have a very robust behavior pattern and also corresponding neural activation, so they can start to answer, uh, target the different neural uh, sub, subtypes of uh, interneurons, also the pyramid neurons. So they can use the uh, uh, optogenetics inhibition to test whether the PV neurons in this uh, first experiment 
is the main contributor to this uh, elevated activity and also behavior modulation. So in this, uh, in this experiment, they implant this optic fiber in the prenimbic area of the prefrontal region and then design the experiment similar to their uh, standalone behavior and also the, the, the coupled with the electricity arts. So they have a, a compared group with the neutral mice and also the release status mice. And, and another pair, they, they have neutral mice versus the uh, stressed mice. So the, there's some reduction in the time spent to the demonstrator, meaning their general sociability was affected. So however, if you compare these relief mice with the neutral mice, the light on, meaning inhibiting the PV neurons, didn't affect this discrimination. So the as in the control condition, the PV, the, the, the animal will naturally spend more time to approach this uh, uh, positive effective uh, animal, which is also true in this negative effect state discrimination task. The animal's natural preference was not abolished by this PV neuron, interneuron inhibition. So, which is pretty uh, similar when you do uh, similar inhibition on the pyramid neuron cell. So it is almost exactly the, uh, the same, except that uh, social ability was not affected. Instead of showing a uh, reduced social ability, the pyramid neurons inhibition uh, didn't affect anything, not the social ability or the social discrimination. So the optic fiber was also placed in the, in the same re similar region. Uh, and then this uh, behavior task was uh, 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 you will see, yeah, same same as the uh, previous experiment. And the next set of experiment would be focusing on the somatostatin interneurons. So they, they will use the uh, uh, inhibition first and then use the activation uh, following this inhibition. We see how the bi-direction directional regulation of this somatostatin activity affecting this social discrimination capability. So consistent with the, uh, when we look at the sociability index, which is the time uh, to spend in, in towards the demonstrator, if you see the activation of this uh, inhibition of the somatostatin neurons have no effect on the sociability, which is the opposite compared to the PV neurons, meaning uh, their function could be different. So which is all, all, all not strengthened in this following uh, discrimination task. So the PV neurons will not inhibiting the PV neurons have no effect on the d discrimination. Well, when you inhibit the somatostatin neurons, you start to see the abolishment uh, of this uh, social discrimination ability. So this, uh, this is true for both positive effective status and also the negative effective status. So generally by comparing PV neurons inhibition and the somatostatin neuron inhibition, you can see there's two opposite trend. One is affecting the social ability, another one is affecting uh, social discrimination. So this is very unique to the social discrimination since they, they have run a very thorough experiments to prove there's not a general uh, feature can relate to other uh, similar tasks like the sociability if you uh, related to the ob uh, novel objective recognition between the mouse and an uh, objective. There, there's a social, the discrimination was not affected by inhibiting the somatostatin neurons. And also by, by the novelty test from two mice, one is a little bit old compared to the uh, more recently novel mice. So there are some discrimination between this uh, uh, fresh animal versus a, a slightly old animal. Then this, uh, this discrimination was not affected. So it's really very specific to their affected state instead of a general difference in the in the objective or in the, in the novelty. And also same is also true when you present the 
anyone with two foods once they establish the discrimination of, of, of food and then these uh, some of the stat neurons have no effect when inhibiting them. So this experiment, the next set of experiments is pretty like confirming experiment. Instead of using inhibition all the time, they're using a closed loop design. So whenever the approach in this affective state animal or this negative affective state animal, the light will be turned on. So it's a uh, self-initiated inhibition of the somostatic neurons. So normally in control ex condition, you will see uh, without the light on, you will see the animal will spend more time to this uh, uh, this positive or negative effect state. However, when you turn on the light, whenever the animal is in this zone, and then you start to see the abolishment of this, the time difference between this neutral or, or relief state or the neutral or the stress state. So, and the latency was not affected since that's before this uh, light was turned on. So the latency was main, uh, there's uh, nothing else was affected. It's just really during the experiment, uh, activity discriminating well, if some of the stent neurons is affected, then they suddenly lose this uh, discrimination capability. So, Following their inhibition experiment would be their stimulation. They, will, they, they just, it, it's pretty curious to see whether it can turn a neutral animal into a positive or negative one. And then they are using uh, channel adoption, uh, which is a D DIO, which is create dependent expression in, in the somostatin create line. So they use the similar closed loop strategy uh, whenever the animal in this uh, positive uh, in, in one at one of the in the zone of one animal, the light would be on. So you can see even though these two animals are neutral, which uh, you, you accept there's no difference in control condition. However, whenever you stimulate the somostatin neurons, you will start to see the animal will spend more time in this uh, uh, activated uh, somostatin activation condition. So the, yeah, this is a similar graph. This is just a community plot. This is uh, just the first two minutes. Again, is the most uh, uh, robust uh, region. You can see consistent difference. So the number of visits were different or was not affected. Uh, the, there are some slight uh, subtle difference in the head position, meaning there's a more close to the animal when, when you uh, stimulate in the some of stem neurons. So this experiment was, uh, they have done some control experiments to confirm those are really related to the somostatin stimulation. So they use a similar experiment, but in this case, the LED light was off. So they shouldn't expect any uh, difference between two neutral animals. And also the, when we place two objective, in, in the in the in their chamber, you should not expect they're different, and also this uh, light stimulation of this uh, similar statin uh, have no effect on this uh, on this uh, behavior uh, behavior performance in, in the time characterized by the time span in the zone. And the the next experiment was just confirming uh, these are really social effect, not a reward seeking. So this is a a real time place preference test. So whenever the animal is in one zone, the, the LED light was on, if it is reward seeking, the animal will tend to spend more time in that zone. However, they don't see that at least the, during the, uh, in the, in the first 10 minutes of this experiment. Uh, there's no difference between this, uh, uh, the two zones, stimulating zone or the neutral zone. There's no difference in their generous uh, motor behavior to the distance they run in the, in the in the chamber is not affected. So this is no, nose poking uh, is a similar rewards uh, seeking testing, whether is uh, whenever the no, nose poke is associated with the reward. And if it is a reward, 
the thermostatic activation is associated with the reward. Whenever you have a light on, you should have more uh, node nodes poking events. However, you, you don't see that during the first day or during the second day of this uh, reward uh, related testing. Since they they see from this their inhibition and excitation of the somnostatin experiment, they, they know the somnostatin neurons was affected. And however, uh, it's not it's not clear how the pyramid neurons was affected since the their electric physiology was not conclusive. So it, it could be uh, since the overall the group average is elevated. However, it could be uh, contributed by the stent neurons. So in the next set of experiments, they use the Vista imaging technique from Escobics. So implant a lens in the pre limbic region. And then uh, with the miniscope imaging, they can quantify the activity at a single cell level. Uh, in this experiment, they use two wires. One is the flex, uh, Cree-dependent expression of GCAM in the somnostatin Cree line, so they can image the somnostatin neurons. In another set of animals, uh, they're using kinase-driven GCAM6. They're recording from the pyramid neurons. So for the first graph is recording from somnostatin neurons, and they have three conditions, neutral versus neutral, stress versus neutral, or relief versus neutral. These are grouped activities. So you, they are not comparing neutral versus uh, uh, the first animal versus the second animal. So this general group average is showing uh, from the Ross plot, individual neurons, you can see they uh, have different row. So at the start of the exploration, you will see the general activation from the similar stand neurons, pretty consistent with the uh, electrophysiology recording. And also similar to their electrophysiology, when you record from not separating the neutral first animal versus the second animal, you see a general elevation, uh, at least from their representative image, row by row uh, from the single row, especially from this uh, stress versus neutral or relief versus neutral, you will see a general slight increase compared to this uh, habituation period. There are subtle differences when you separate them out. When you compare relief animal versus neutral animal from uh, with this uh, miniscope imaging technique, since that's the advantage, you can uh, monitor the single cell activity across the whole behavior. You can mo monitor the longitudinal recording within the cell chain. So you know the same neuron how they respond to different uh, stimuli or different demonstrator. So First, with this somnostatin neuron recording, you can see that in the neutral condition, the activity was generally lower. If you expose them to relieved animal, they tend to have elevated somnostatin neuron activity, which is expected uh, consistent with their electrophysiology. However, uh, yeah, which is also true when you compare this stress animal with this uh, neutral animal, there's general elevation. So, which is uh, summarized in the bar chart about 30 to 40% of the neurons are elevated and half of them are not responsive. So I mean, there's no change. A small, very small population has some inhibition. The most striking, most uh, in, like, informative thing from the immunoscope imaging is really how the pyramid neurons is affected at a single cell level by this uh, different uh, stimuli, the dense demonstrator. So, in the neutral condition, the activity was uh, was not high. It was was at the uh, close to the baseline level, and then uh, I think it's most obvious when you compare stress and versus the neutral, the activity was generally inhibited. So it's also some can be summarized and viewed better better in this uh, bar chart, stacking bar chart. So most neurons was inhibiting inhibited where some a small population can have activation. And, and also in the relief status, it's because most neurons have no effect, so it's harder to see from this pairwise comparison. But overall, you can see from these two 
so much dead neuron recording versus pure neuron ne recording, you can see they are very opposite trends. So one is showing at elevation, the pure neurons is inhibited. So when they quantified the synchrony index, you can so comparing the somatostatin neuron activity versus the pure neuron activity. So when they exposed to the stress or relief stimuli, the somatostatin neurons will not only get elevated, also they're more synchronized. So that's what is reflected in this synchrony index. And uh, in the contrast, the pure neuron not only being inhibited, also their synchrony index was reduced. So the correlation index is uh, another way to look at the synchrony is a pairwise correlation, how the neurons behave similar to each other. And in the, in the relief versus the neutral state, their correlation will be stronger compared to uh, from the somatostatin neurons. Uh, and also, which will be more obvious, uh, uh, will be more obvious when it's compared to stress animal versus the neutral animal. The pyramid neurons have a slightly opposite trend, so the correlation index reduced compared to neutral condition, which meaning there is sparser firing, also there are less synchronized firing. So. So the next graph, we show the somatostatin neurons. Does that have a really direct impact on the, on the pyramid neurons using envelope imaging, which have uh, the capability to do the optogenetics in, in addition to the GCAM, uh, min, min GCAM recording. So the, the, ch ch the heterodopsin expressed in the somatostatin neurons well, in the same field of view, the, the chemical kinase driven GCAM6 is expressed in the pyramid neurons. So they can do the recording and also in the same time to investigate whether inhibition of the somatostatin neurons will have an effect on the output. So they compare uh, these uh, different power how, how, and, and they find out the uh, optimal light power at two milliwatt per uh, square millimeter, and they can see uh, compared to this baseline activity, there's some elevation in this GCAM signal, so, which is meaning there's direct uh, output inhibition from this somatostatin. You, if you disinhibit this, uh, this uh, regulation, and you will have an uh, elevated activity, so, which is summarized in this bar chart. So more than 60% of these neurons will be elevated, and a few of them uh, have no change, and and also a small population have very uh, ne negative impact. So they also have tested with the combined optogenetics with the electrophysiology, which uh, you should expect to have seen very similar pattern. When you apply during this uh, uh, recording then this elevation of this uh, pure, of this uh, uh, the group average will be elevated when you inhibit the somatostatin neurons, and then when you use the opposite, uh, yeah, I think there is some labeling error. So this is uh, when you excited this uh, somatostatin neurons, you will see inhibition from the uh, excitatory uh, neuron output. So the, you can see this is a group average effect when you're uh, motivating some of the staff and neural activity. Okay, so this is uh, a very organized, very neat organized paper. I think uh, just by looking at their title of their result section, you will start to see their logic, pretty clear logic. So the, the mice with, with their very robust behavior can really distinguish between different cost specifics based on these uh, altered affective states. And this, uh, they have done a series of very careful testing to really narrow in to focus on the somatostatin. So they tested the PV cells and the, the pyramid cells, and none of them have really have a uh, effect 
on the affective state discrimination. The PV neurons might have some impact on the sociability, but that's really a different aspect of this, uh, of this behavior. And the somostatin interneurons in comparison really uh, have very direct role in this affective state discrimination. If you inhibit this activity, their affective state discrimination will be abolished. If you activate these somostatin interneurons and they very soon have this ability to get this difference between these two uh, neutral mice. So this is one of the most striking findings I find in this paper since uh, uh, most of the behavior you need uh, some training, but this uh, really there's some uh, like instant change in, in when you tune the somostatin neurons, you can definitely uh, tell why introduce some difference between these uh, and their social or psycho specific. And the last point is really the efficacy discrimination really trigger, which is can be seen from this uh, cartoon from from one of the commentary paper. So the Affective state discrimination start to trigger the synchrony of this uh, somostatin neuron firing is from the, which is the blue cells. Well, this in turn inhibiting these pyramid neurons, we have a sparse and less cardiac firing. And this local circuit function is pretty important for this uh, uh, emotion detection, which is uh, one way to approximate human emotion detection. So, yeah, I think this is a very interesting paper in terms of how close they can, I can use a simple mass model to start asking questions like how these different emotion states can be decoded in, in the uh, local region. So it could be more complicated motion in humans and also in non-human primates. Yeah, I'm excited to see more studies in that direction. So yeah, I have been Okay, I think that's the end of my uh, presentation. So I would love to take uh, any questions you have. So I, I think we, we ended a bit early. So this since it's very, very organized the paper, so we can spend uh, the last time to walk through it. Yeah, that was that was great, Ching. Thank you. Um, yeah, just as a reminder to everyone, feel free to um, submit any questions in the chat box. Um, I also really enjoyed this paper, and I appreciate you going through all the figures. I think. The paper did a really nice job of dissecting exactly which populations in the PFC were responsible for effective discrimination versus general social interaction. Um, and I think they really used a, the combination of optogenetics, electrophysiology, and miniscope calcium imaging um, in a really convincing way to, to draw their conclusions. Um, so I really, I really enjoyed the presentation. Um, so we'll go ahead and start going through some of the questions that have been um, submitted in the chat box. So um, Ching, one of the first questions is, why did they perform the miniscope experiments in addition to the EFIS measurements? Um, so if you can sort of explain perhaps the differences in the two modalities, and I think um, you know they're specifically asking what's the role of the miniscope measurements in this study? Yeah, so, I think the e is really great in terms of the timing. It's, it can be uh, to look at the how, if you look at the latency, the, since the comparing to the calcium decay, it's faster in, in terms of detecting uh, how soon this event start. But in this case, it doesn't really uh, matter much since it's, uh, you can also see the activation even before this uh, social exploration. Uh, I think the depth, uh, the one of the caveats of the ECs is really there's no way to distinguish between three types. Maybe you can mm -hmm. separate the PV cells, fast spiking neurons, versus the rest. But really, it's hard to separate these uh, somostatin neurons from these uh, excitin neurons. It's based on the waveform and also this uh, firing rate versus the waveform. It's pretty overlapping. So, the, the, in, 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 in order to understand which inhibitor neurons uh, or, or the pyramid neurons was really elevated or or inhibited in, in the in this plot, since the the network effect is elevated, but it could really be contributed by the smooth neurons. 
and the, the, the inhibition of these pure minerals was actually masked, so you cannot detect them using the ephes. So with this uh, miniscope imaging, you can do subtype specific recording. So you can use uh, chemokinase two driven. So that means this only the excitatory pure minerals express this the GCAM signal. So it, the, all, all you detected is from that subpopulation. Then you can start to see the differences at a single cell level. So if you, you can do a pairwise cartilage comparison compared to the uh, neutral stimuli with this is a relief stimuli, you can see how this signal was changed from the, the compared to some of the neurons, it's normally is elevated. However, if you look carefully, uh, you can see the pure neurons actually have the opposite trend. They are getting more inhibition compared to the neutral stimuli. Yeah, absolutely. I think one really cool follow-up could be seeing what happens in the mice when they're continuously exposed to these um, relief or stressed mice. And I think with the miniscope imaging, you could really start to look to see at how these networks are changing over time. Is there any plasticity involved with sort of learning um, maybe the differences in these, in these mice? And if the synchrony in the somatostatin and pyramidal um, populations are changed, I think that could be um, a really cool thing to look at. Um, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, right. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so another question um, is the somatostatin role in effective state discrimination due to um, a special input they receive um, about this modality, or is it due to a special role they play in the PFC circuit? Yeah, I think in this discussion with this paper, the 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 authors mentioned that could be due to the projection from the amygdala, for example. Mm -hmm. I think that might be, well, the, the follow-up paper, they, they can study, see how the different input from different region. And also, since the, they have two affected state, it can easily using more fancy chest, uh, genetics to, to maybe even be able to separate out which neurons are more responsive to the positive net affected state versus the uh, negative affected state. So there are more things can be done uh, with uh, newer technology. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's also probably something really interesting going on within the PFC circuit itself, because I think what you showed is that if you just inhibit the pyramidal neurons, you don't see a modulation in effective state discrimination. But if you, um, you know, modulate the somatostatin neurons, you do see something. So it's probably not something as simple as the somatostatin neurons, you know, directly inhibiting pyramidal neurons to cause this behavior, but probably some more complicated um, circuitry going on. Yeah, that's the uh, part of albumin neurons. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the output also could be interesting. So yeah. in addition to the projection, see how this um, statin affecting the motor neuron or the, the motor output, why this the neurons so special. Is there like emotion, really emotion related or the action related? So there's yeah, many open questions. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so another question. Do mice sense the effective state through the olfactory system? Um, during the experiment, does whether the relief uh, secretes or not affect the observer's behavior? In addition, any control that circuit manipulation on observers does not affect olfaction. Yeah, this is a, uh, in, in their supplementary figures, they did uh, separate out different sensory cues. Uh, I think the video cues could have some impact if, since uh, they, if they play a movie of showing this uh, different mice, different status can activate different activity. And with the, all the olfactory cues alone, they can also uh, approximate most of the behavior. I, I don't think they are exactly the same, but I think they can evoke most of these behavior differences and also neural activity difference. So definitely the neural key, uh, the olfactory cues is very important to dis dis distinguish the uh, different uh, affective state. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so those are, I think all the questions that we had um, submitted. So if there are no other questions, we'll uh, actually, sorry, one more question. And again, feel free to submit some more questions um, as we respond to this one. So another question just came in. Um, 
So another study from the insular cortex shows its role in effective state discrimination. So I guess the question is how, how these brain regions work together. Could this be because of a common amygdala input to both structures? Yeah, so I, I, I don't get the question. So is there, which re, uh, what's the next brain region also shows similar pattern? I, I didn't hear the your- The insular your, cortex. Your, oh, insular cortex. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, I think a lot of, yes, it's, yeah, I, I think it could be due to the projection. Medina could affect both regions, that's my guess. Uh, yeah, it would be interesting to see how different regions have different output if they're showing similar patterns. But I, I bet there must be some subtle differences since all, always initially looks similar, but all, when you dig deeper and deeper, they start to see differences. So yeah, so that's very, very good to know. Yeah, the incident yeah, can yeah. have similar patterns. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if, um, you know, there's two different populations in the amygdala, some that respond to positive effective states, some that respond to negative effective states, if maybe though they differentiate based on um, where they're projecting to. Yeah, definitely. I think it could be way, if you study the semester function, could it be that some interaction between this uh, uh, insular and also the prefrontal cortex. So yeah, yeah. It's very, very likely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, thanks everyone for submitting these questions. I think this, all these questions sort of led to um, some really interesting discussions on the paper and other papers, um, you know, involved in some of the similar questions. So thank you again, Ching, for walking us through this excellent publication. Thanks again, everyone else for um, attending and also sending in questions. We hope that this was scientifically stimulating for everyone and that you will join us again next week when we will pre be presenting a very cool publication from Larry's Weifel's group and at the same time next Friday. Um, please stay safe and healthy and hopefully we can all get back to our regular research activities soon. Take care. All right. Bye everyone. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.